cement. I don't think they did. It wasn't actual cement, but it was like they made blocks of like things where people were inside of them and they found people's bones inside of these big rocks. Really? I have not heard that, but it sounds believable and horrific. All right. So let's, uh, on that note, let's talk about some of the positives of Mongol rule uh, before we get to some negatives and get to the crazy. Uh, so one of the things about the Mongols is they're incredibly innovative. People today, like training to be in the military, like if you go to West Point, you'll study Chinggis Khan and his tactics, what he did. The way they use cavalry, horse archers, surprise attacks, sieges, all of those things, we still hear about it. We still study it. He was ahead of his time. Another positive that we talked a lot about yesterday with our do now was the fact of religious tolerance. You know, for us, it's not so surprising. You know, we have 21 students in this class. Currently, there are 16 of you who thought it was worth your time to come to class today. And <clears throat> out of the 16 of us, there might be 10 different belief systems among us. You know, some of you might um, have a religion or a faith. Some of you might ch choose not to. Um, back then, things were very different, whereas things were very homogenous. If you lived in an area, pretty much everybody believed and thought the same thing as you. And those that didn't were often mistreated. So when the Mongols came in and said, we don't care what you believe, you can believe whatever you want. That was something that was very new and refreshing, you know. Common legal code. This was, you know, it was a big deal when we talked about Hammurabi last year, going and unifying his empire uh, and had everybody, you know, follow the same laws with his code. This is still a big deal that we have. The fact that we have a huge area going and being ruled, you know, with the same law. So it was consistent. Another aspect is the fact that if you had a skill or talent, it would be utilized. We sing in our song, which maybe we'll have time to at the end, I'm not sure, um, that, you know, saving only those who could serve them. So when they're going and doing the executions, you know, and they find out that Celeste is a doctor, they keep her alive so that, you know, she can go keep on practicing medicine. When they find that Leighton is wonderful at making um jewelry they keep her alive so she can continue to make beautiful art when they find out that london is a general they go they keep her alive and give her a chance to go and serve the mongols uh so people were able to keep their talents and use their skills people weren't forced into just farming another thing that's awesome about the mongols is the fact that women received um, a super high amount of rights. The fact that, un unlike the rest of the world at this time, women had almost equality with men. I mean, later on next week, we're going to talk about Kudalin, who's going to be um, one of 18 children. She had 17 brothers. She was the only girl. And who did her father look to as his best general? Kudalin. Who did his father want to leave his part of the empire to? Or her father? Kudalin. So, you know, girls were, you know, able to attain great status under the Mongols. Um, now, she wasn't able to, unfortunately, become the next Khan um, because other people wouldn't let her. But we have the fact that Girls, when the guys are gone, someone has to run the place. Think about it. Warlike societies. If all the men are off at war, someone has to make things still happen. And that was the women. So women could own businesses, property, do, do it all. And that's something unique for this time period. Just like when we talk about the Spartans, how women had a lot of rights. And when we talk about the Aztecs. So we see a consistent aspect with the, um, with the war. All right. We see a huge empire, which, you know, obvious, huge empire. Uh, we know it's the biggest continental empire in history. But what's amazing is with that empire, they completely have safe trade with it. You know, Amanda could walk from one end of the empire to another, holding a golden vessel above her head. And they say, 
no one would touch her. No one would try to rob her because they knew what the consequences were. And because they created this huge empire, because they had so much trade, the most important thing was not wealth. It was the ideas that traveled all around. As um, you saw me say yesterday, since unfortunately it was like a video of me saying it, which is kind of awkward, the Mongols made the Middle Ages, like, did the changes possible? The Renaissance was possible because of the Mongols. All of these things happened because the Mongols spread information. That sharing of knowledge, of ideas, of technology changed the world. This is so humongous, this cultural diffusion. So we see there were many positives about Mongols and what they did. But we know also that there are going to be many negatives. Now, the Mongols were constantly fighting each other. Think about it. Before Genghis Khan, the Mongols were constantly at war with each other. After Genghis creates this huge empire, they're still often in civil war. I mean, we see the greatest amount of expansion under Chinggis Khan. We see Kublai Khan going, conquering China. We see Ogadai and Munke going and getting some lands into Europe and more into the Middle East. But the biggest gains were under Chinggis, probably because there's fighting amongst themselves after that. Another negative, although the Mongols were fair rulers to most of the people they conquered, they were not fair to the Chinese and also the Koreans, which they often grouped together with the Chinese. They were ruthless to them. They did not give them rights. They did not give them freedoms. They often were extremely harsh and used a lot of force, killed a lot of people that were innocent. So they were terrible to China. They took the Chinese wealth and power and they squandered it. They, spend, they spent tons of money. They built palaces and had jewels and didn't care about the people of China. We know that the Mongol Empire wasn't a, a completely united empire. We have four Khanates. We have the Golden Horde, which was Russia. Uh, we have the Il Khanate, which is present day Persia. The Chagatai Khanate is kind of interesting with parts of Russia, parts of like where Afghanistan and the like, um, Armenia, well, actually, Armenia is over there. Um, but, you know, all the stands, uh, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, all that area. And then, of course, our Wan dynasty. And we can't forget that they spread the plague on purpose. There's pictures of them going. They, If they found out that, you know, Jackson had the plague, they would, you know, after he died, they'd chop him up, put him on the catapult, and shoot him over the walls. There's pictures of that. I mean, drawings, but still. You know, and plus, the Mongol trade ships are the ones that went and brought the rats, which had the fleas on them, to Europe, to the Middle East, to Africa. So they're part and parcel with the plague. So now some crazy parts, right? We know that the surrender or die was absolutely unbelievable. We have stories, I mean, you saw like we, the, the one thing said 1.7, this one says 1.6 million people killed in one city at Nishapur. We, we talked about that, right? Insanity. We think as many as 30 to 50 million people were killed because of the Mongols, because they either flat out sliced and diced them, because they deprived you of food, because they deprived you of shelter. I mean, so much. But then here's another crazy thing. We think it could be 0.5%, so half a percent of people are, you know, males, we think, are descended from Genghis Khan. You know, and if you count with the girls, too, I mean, we think maybe up to almost 4 million people are descendants of Genghis Khan today. That's kind of crazy. He had over 500 wives. Now, often he'd, you know, he'd marry a princess after he ruled a, conquered an area, and he wouldn't even, let, like... He wouldn't even be there present for the wedding. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're married. Okay, I got to go conquer some more. <laughs> but, yeah, I know it's crazy. But he had over 500 wives. I mean, like we said, 0.5% of male population on Earth descended from Genghis Khan. All right. Variant was our notes. So I'm going to stop our recording. Any questions on any of this?